Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be having a look at the King Bolin Battery Analyzer. Right then, this is a brand new bit of kit to me. Um, I've taken it out of the box because it's quite shiny when it's on camera. So that's down on there. Now, there's not a lot of instruction with it. That's it, just a little bit of card that comes with it, right? So I've had a quick flick through there. It, I haven't used it yet, it's still tied up. But according to it, there's no batteries go in it. It just works off the battery or doesn't work off the battery that you plug it into or clip it onto. And it will tell you a, a few different things. Now, I'll read this off the card because I have just looked at it. Basically, red to red, black to black, that's pretty obvious. You click that on and the machine will turn on. There's a small screen at the front. And once that's lit up, it will give you the choice to choose between 6 volt, 12 volt or 24 volt whichever battery system you've got. So what, whatever it is, all the way up from like little gadgets all the way up to lorries really. Um, now, it says on here, there's a few abbreviations. There's SOH, which is status of health, right? Which I've never heard of that in batteries before, but I presume it'll be a good or a bad, whichever that is. Um, SOC, status of charge. I'm presuming that's how much charge is in the battery, what percentage we're at, etc. And then there's R, which is internal resistance. Now, I've never measured the internal resistance of a battery before. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Um, so that's a new one on me. I'm sure if you know, you can pop it in the comments section below and, uh, and tell me all about it. But basically, the uh, oh, and lastly, sorry, there's VOL, um, and that's a battery voltage. That's what I'm after. Um, these batteries get left in various machines. This one's off my generator. This one's off a, a mower and this one's off a, a large um, petrol car. So I've got three there. Now, I don't know what sort of state they're in. I'm hoping this one's pretty all right because that's off my, my, my mower. Um, I'm not sure about this. I took it off the generator. We haven't used the generator in a while because the starter motor had gone. That's a whole different video if you want to have a look at that. Uh, I had a test on as well using the, the 12 volt system. So that's off there. I can't remember whether I charged it up or not. So it'll be interesting to see. But there is a little green dot in there which normally says that they're okay. Um, and then this one came off the vehicle, the, the the vehicle because the vehicle failed. It failed to start and there wasn't enough charge in the battery. I have since charged that battery up uh, and it was up to 14.4 volts on my battery charger. But, but I do not know whether it's held any of that or not. So it's a, it's a good test to, to find out if it has or not. Now, like I say, I've got a battery charger and that will tell you the voltage. That's great if you can get the battery charger plugged into the mains and to the battery. If you can't, you can walk around with this, you can clip it onto your different machines or whatever you want to check, and it will give you the information there and then wherever you are. You don't need to be on grid, etc. Now, there's a couple of things you have to do to set this up according to it. When you turn it, you clip it on black and red, and it just puts the screen on automatically. There's no on or off button on there. If you can see, just a few simple controls. So you clip that on. And then it tells you to pick between 6 volt, 12 volt, 24 volt. So these are all 12 volt. And then we'll go from there. And then you have to put in enter the CCA. Now the CCA is a cold cranking amp power, I think, I think, or cold cranking amps. That's basically the power you've got. If you've got a diesel vehicle or, or a big engine vehicle, it's normally a higher CCA number. Now, I did have a quick look on these batteries and I've got, I've got a CC, I haven't got a CCA number. I've got an EN number, an EN number on this one, and an SAE number on that one. So I had to have a quick Google, and I've like got the information here in front of me. And it says, what's the difference between CCA and EN? CCA and EN ratings are not equivalent, okay? CCA and EN are both tested at the same temperature of minus 17.8 degrees C. So I never knew that they tested batteries at nearly minus 18 degrees C. That's a new one on me. Whenever it sort of dips below zero or around zero, I'm always out checking the batteries, making sure that they're topped up with charge, etc. So that's, you know, that's a new one on me, minus 18 degrees C. However, the EN test is more rigorous with the battery having to perform at its highest level for a longer period of time. So basically, 
they're both testing for the same thing at minus 18 degrees, but one has to do it for a long time at a higher level. So for the purposes of this machine, I'm taking the SAE number, the EA number, and the CCA number as what we put in for CCA. Okay, so I, know, I don't think that'll make much of a difference. He wants to know the voltage of the battery and, and the, the, the CCA or the EN or the SAE, right? That's what it wants to know. So if you can put those two things in, it'll tell you more or less, you know, whether you're there or not. What you're looking for really is something about 12, 13, 14 volts. If it's dropped down to 11, maybe 10, you can rescue it a bit below that and they take a bit of work to bring back up to charge. So without further ado, let's get the first one on and test it. Well then, I've clipped the first one on, red to the positive, black to the negative, and we've got a lit up screen look. So there you go, there's something lit up. I don't know if you can see there, but it's flashing at the top, 6, 12, and 24. So I'll just click on the 12, press the green OK button, and now it's come up with a CCA, and it's preset at 500. Um, so just press the down arrow, and this on the top of here, the EN is 330, 330. So I'll click it down. It goes down in um, in fives. So it doesn't take that long to get there. 330. Right, you can see that on there, 330. Now, if anybody, uh, if I'm doing this wrong and I need to adjust the EN number or SAE number or whatever I've got compared to, to what, what it should be, just let me know. But this is what I'm this is what I've got at the moment, so this is what I'm going with, okay? So I'm on 330. I'm gonna press OK again, the green button, press that, and it's like analyzing. Look, it's just doing whatever it does. Oh, there's a number on there. Uh, it's got battery type 12 volt CCA 117. So it's just come up with 117. So I don't know what that is. 117, whether that's the actual cold cranking amps it's got in there, 117 instead of 330. But I'll press um, the down button. Right, next one is status of health, and that's 13%. <laughs> so 13%, so I'm presuming I either didn't charge it up when it came off or I left it, it's been a long time since I did charge it up. It's dropped down to 13%, so that's not great, is it? Um, next, next one is status of charge. It's reading zero on there. So I don't know if my numbers are correct with the EN, SAE and all that nonsense, um, but it's saying status of charge is zero. And in the bottom corner, look, it's saying that poor, it's just poor, the battery's poor. So, okay on that one. And then we'll go to the internal resistance, 22.15, 22.15. Now that's the ohm signal down there. I don't know if that's in, in milliohms when, it, when it's done that on there. And again, it's just saying poor the whole time. And then we'll go down to voltage, 11.9 volts. So 11.9 volts. Now, if I was just doing this from a battery charger, I'll click that on and I think 11.9, I'm not far off. I'll leave that on charge for a couple of hours. You've got smart chargers now, haven't we? So they're just, sort of tick themselves along and, and when it, it's had enough they turn off so I'd have thought that that battery was pretty good and I'd have been happy with it and left it on charge but may not be as good as I thought and it might let us down right we we'll move on to the next one now and, uh, and see what that says right then so same again clipped it on we've got a flashing screen I'll press 12 volts I wish I'd got some 6 volts or some 24 volts somewhere to test but I haven't got any um, and again, it's defaulted at 500. You can see that on the screen. So we're going to go for what we've got here, 420 amps in brackets EN. So 420, I'll go down to. So there's bigger cranking power in this one than in the previous one, but, and you think the battery's about the same sort of volume. Right, analyzing at 420. Oh, come up with CCA 109. Now, again, I don't know if the maths are out because of the, the variation in the numbers, if I'm putting it in wrong, but I've got four, 420 it's supposed to be, and I've got 109, so that's saying status is poor, right? 
uh, voltage 12.3 now like I said before if I'd have got 12.3 on my battery charger I'd have been quite happy with that battery and I'd have thought we're doing well um, internal resistance 23.77 The final voltage 12.3, 23.77 on the resistance. Status of health, uh, status of charge 50%. So it's only 50% charged, right? Uh, strange. And status of health 7%, 7%. So I thought that was a good battery. That's off, that's off a working machine, you know. That's off a working machine, or it was working. A, a, well, last time we used it was a couple of weeks ago, um, so it was on there. I know it's been it's been cold since, been frosty and icy. So uh, I'm not sure how it how it's uh, fared. But according to this, seven percent status of health. So that's that's not great. Now I'm gonna try the big battery uh, over this side now. I know that big battery will probably be bad because it was on the vehicle. I, the vehicle failed to start. I charged the battery up, the vehicle started. It ran for a couple of days and it did the same again and I kept charging it and charging it. Anyway, I had a new battery, um, fitted the new battery and I, I kept the old one because I always think they might come in handy just in the workshop for running something. Even if they're not 100%, they're still sort of able to provide a little bit of power for something somewhere along the way. So I'll give that one a blast. Now, from what I can see with this machine, you can't really turn it off. But if you make a mistake on whatever you've done, you just press the big red arrow and you just press it a couple of times and it gets you back to the original screen where you select the battery 6, 12 or 24. So it's easy to use. Right, I'm gonna get the big one on now and see if that's any good. Right then, the big battery. So, uh, I don't know which way this is gonna go. It was on a big car, big V8 engine, and um, the car was running and it stopped running because it was stopped starting because the, the battery went. So I charged the battery up and it stopped again. So uh, after a couple of days, and I did it again and again, and I finally bit the bullet and I just bought a new battery but I always like to keep them knocking around because I always think they'll power something somewhere along the line so um, but I, I've put it on charge um, I did put it on charge and, and then left it so I don't know how quickly it's dropped but um, we'll look on the top um, the SAE is 800 amps so I'm going to use that as the CCA number oh another quick point I'm going to test this before I test that I'm going to swap the polarity round I'm going to put red on the negative and the negative on the positive and see what happens and do you know what happens nothing it doesn't light up at all so that's that's what's supposed to happen and look according to the instructions it should still work because there's a reverse polarity test in there so if we put that on there is it lit up yes it has it's lit up so there you go, that works, so you can't get it wrong. Now, 800 then. It's a long way from 500 up to 800 in five uh, digit increments. we get there in a sec. 800. Now, like to save this battery. I don't hold out much hope for this, but saying that, I thought the other two would be all right. <laughs> I thought the other two would be okay. They come off working machines. Well, the, the mower one has. Right, it's just analysing at the moment. Oh, that didn't take long. Right, CCA number is number nine. Uh, so from 800 down to nine, that's a long way to fall. So that's that one. We'll go status of health, 0%. Status of charge, 0%. 267.91 milliohms. Now I think that's milliohms. I'm not sure why you measure the resistance in the battery, okay? Somebody out there will know and they'll be able to tell me and we can do a different, more informed video with some other bits of kit. But you will know why you'd measure the resistance inside the battery. But uh, I don't, I don't know. I, it must be some resistance to, to charge. It's got to offer some resistance to be able to charge. And I don't know whether that resistance needs to be lower or higher. But this one seems to be quite high and there's nothing in 
this according to it. But saying that, again, 11, 11.15 11 volts. Now, again, I'd have chucked that on the battery charger, thought, oh, I've only got to bring that up a couple of volts and we were well away. But I, I knew that was wrong, which is why I got this analyzer, because I could understand that I was lifting this from 11 up to 13, 14, dropping it back in the vehicle, turning it over, cranking it, and it'd either start and just about run, or it wouldn't start at all. And if it did start, it wouldn't run for very long hours, you know, maybe a day at a push, and, it, and it'd be gone again. So I just kept thinking to myself, there must be something different here. It can't just be the voltage that we're working on, because I've got the voltage in there. There must be something else that we can look at. So hence this battery analyzer, and I can tell you what's what. The numbers don't mean a lot to me, but I understand that the numbers are low on here, We've got status of health and status of charge as a low percentage and the battery doesn't work. So we understand that. So there you go. Now it's available on Amazon. Uh, next day delivery if you have Prime as well. They're around 20 odd pounds or something like that. Now I thought that one might be a bit duff. This one was a complete mystery to me. I did not know what it would, what it would be like, but it would be interesting to put it on charge and see how it copes. But this one, Funnily enough, we had on a working mower just a couple of weeks ago, I think. So we were out and about doing a, a bit of stuff with it and it started the mower up and ran round. Um, I did put it on charge before I started that mower up, but I didn't realise sort of how, how poor the battery was. So it's a good job that I've taken this off really and tested it because we could have been out full blown mowing season and it could have let us down quite quickly. So there you go. So conclusion from this, I'm going to have to spend a lot of money on buying some new batteries. But otherwise, I think this time, this little gadget here has saved me a lot of time and a lot of effort with charging up some Duff batteries that I already had. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe when you can, if you can. And if you know any more than me, which I'm sure you do, please put it in the comment section below and I'll be able to research it and we'll be able to do a couple of different videos and we'll be able to tell everybody all about it. Thanks again. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.